Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we're talking about busting some myths. Yesterday I put together a video where we were talking about martial arts myths, but then once I put that together, I went, ooh, I should actually focus on fight sports and talk about some myths there as well. So as I already mentioned, yesterday I put out a video where we were talking about martial arts myths. And the difference between yesterday's video and today's is now we are focusing on fight sports. Yesterday I mentioned that a lot of people in the general public who don't know much about martial arts will still believe things like the death touch. You can paralyze somebody or there are moves too deadly for cage fighting that aren't allowed because they're just so dangerous. And Anybody who's a real fight sport aficionado, let's say, will know that's not true. But that doesn't mean that there aren't myths within fight sports in general, within the people who think they know a lot. And today we're gonna to touch on all of those. But first, I wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of this episode, X Marshall. These guys have some of the best fight apparel that I've laid my eyes on or that have touched my body. You guys can head over to X Marshall website. It is in the description below and use that promo code Gabriel Varga to save 10%. And remember, it's not just apparel that they sell. They also have all sorts of gear and streetwear collection as well. Now, the first myth that I want to pop for the fight sport people out there is headgear makes you safe. It does not. And that is one of the reasons that I stopped wearing headgear for the most part in all my sparring years ago. Now, if we look at the Olympics, boxing in particular, they removed headgear because there are enough studies done showing that the impact with headgear on versus not on was not making any difference. In fact, you're getting hit more with the headgear on because your head's bigger and your vision is compromised, so it's actually more damaging to your brain to be wearing the headgear. So why does anybody wear headgear if you know that? Well, number one, it's gonna stop you or at least decrease the risk of getting black eyes, broken nose if you have one of those bars across your face, and in addition, if you clash heads for some reason, it will save you a lot there. But if you think that headgear is gonna protect you from somebody laying a big punch into your head, it won't. It's not a cushion. It's just a small little bit of protection. Now, yes, the headgear might protect you from certain impacts, which are unpleasant, like head on head. If you're clashing with skulls or an elbow popping off your head, those are gonna be very beneficial to have that headgear on because it's not that blunt force trauma, that's a sharp, unpleasant little experience of that bone on bone right to the skull. And yes, that's when the headgear will serve you very well. But in terms of that impact where your head's getting knocked backwards, it's still just as damaging with the headgear on. So be very aware of that, especially when you go in for your next sparring session. If you go, oh, I put my headgear on every time, but you feel like you're getting hit more often, then I don't know if I'd bother with it. I do wear my headgear when I go in for hard, hard boxing rounds because my headgear, like we said, has that bar across the nose and I'm trying to keep that nose pretty straight until the end of my career. And then after that, I probably won't do much hard sparring anymore anyway. So the headgear won't be a big issue, but that is the only time and the only reason I still wear a headgear. Myth number two, boxing gloves feel like pillows when they hit you. This is somebody who has never done the sport before or somebody who's sparring with people who are going way too light on them. This is not like a pillow. Yes, there's a little bit of give there, but anybody who hits and aims through, they're still gonna rock your head. So yes, it's not the same experience like we were just talking about of having somebody hit you with a bare knuckle, but this is super damaging still and you need to be aware of that. Don't mistake a boxing glove for a pillow. They are, sure, much more pleasant than getting hit with a bare knuckle or an MMA glove, which is so darn thin, but you can still take so much impact with those gloves on. Myth number three, low kicks don't hurt at all and you don't need to bother checking them. A couple years ago, I heard a ref who had just scored, I think it was a UFC bout, and one guy was getting mashed up with the low kicks and the dude ended up winning the fight. And after somebody interviewed 
the judge and said, oh, why'd you give the fight to that guy who was getting a lot of low kicks? And he just said, look it, low kicks don't do anything. That guy landed the better punches, therefore I awarded him the fight. This guy has obviously never been kicked in the leg. If anybody here has taken a shin to the thigh, you know it's like somebody winding up with a baseball bat and going right for the muscle. It is excruciating, it can be debilitating, and it's something you definitely wanna to learn to check or start conditioning up that thigh so that when you do take impact, it's not as traumatic as it might be. The next myth that I want to get out of this, like I want to eliminate it entirely, is if I didn't get knocked down, I didn't get a concussion. And that's something that a lot of people are gonna believe they're gonna go in for a sparring session and be like, yeah, I didn't get knocked down, so I'm safe and I'm healthy, and I didn't get concussed. But you can absolutely have a concussion without getting knocked out or without having that flash knockdown, which drops you. Now, overall, your sparring should be very, very controlled, and you should be recognizing that there are many concussions, and then there are concussions where very severe, but you're still not getting knocked out. If you leave and you're like, oh, my vision's a little bit off, or I have a headache, or anything like that, those are concussion symptoms from impact. So make sure you're not doing that consistently in your training because it's gonna catch up with you sooner or later. The last myth, and many people are probably gonna disagree with me on this, but the last myth is that a 16 ounce glove is so much more protective than a 10 ounce glove. Usually at the gym, people have 10 ounce for bag work, pad work, and they have the 16 ounce for sparring. And I, every once in a while, I'll get somebody who comes in to spar with me from out of town and they're like, oh, Gabriel, I'm so sorry. I don't have 16 ounce gloves. Like, are you sure you wanna spar? I'm like, dude, I don't even notice that much difference between a 10 ounce and a 16 ounce, in all honesty. If somebody's trying to hit me hard, that 16 ounce, I don't know how much more protection it's giving me, but it doesn't feel like a lot. So if you think, oh, okay, I'm gonna put on my 16 ounce gloves and now I can spar as hard as we want because there's that added sense of protection with what, an extra millimeter of padding? You need to eliminate that from your mind. I prefer personally to go with smaller gloves in sparring, 10, 12 ounce, go fast, but pull shots. Because like we already said, concussions can happen even if you're not getting knocked down. So in my opinion, the size difference in the gloves is not what you should be focusing on. It should be focus on how much power you're putting into shots. And those are some myths about fight sports, which I just wanted to run by you guys. And hopefully they help you make some changes to your training and they help you be that much safer. If you enjoyed the episode, please give it a like. Remember to check out the X Marshall website and use that promo code Gabriel Varga to save 10%. As always guys, train hard. I'll see you back here soon for another episode.